It's a classic political tactic. Caught the news media on your way to power. Make time for them. Smile for the cameras. Then, once you're sworn into office, develop a sudden aversion to journalists. J'ai pris la décision de ne pas avoir une présidence bavarde. On a rarement l'occasion de le voir. We very rarely see Macron. The Elysee Palace is quite an impregnable fortress. Macron does not host luncheons with journalists like his predecessor, François Hollande, used to. He stopped doing all of that. There's never an off-the-record moment. He's a president who is always on the record. Macron arrived at the Elysee Palace having been traumatized by what had happened to his predecessor at the hands of the media. As Minister for Finance, Macron witnessed that from up close and must have thought, not me. His solution was to build a Berlin Wall, so to speak, between him and journalists. The first brick in that wall was Macron's mobile phone. François Hollande made his mobile number available to journalists. Dozens of them could contact the former president anytime. Macron didn't want to play the game that way. And from his earliest days in office, he made it clear which journalists he wanted covering his story. At the outset, Emmanuel Macron seemed like he was part president, part assignment editor. For instance, only a few days into his mandate, the president decided to travel to Mali. He then contacted certain media outlets to let them know he only wanted journalists who specialized in defense and foreign policy, not political journalists. This caused quite a stir among media outlets who rightly said that the president should not be allowed to choose which journalists to have by his side. It was his first show of strength. A lot of journalists think he almost never talks, but that's not true. He talks with quite a lot of journalists, but they're mainly foreign, and that annoys French journalists a lot. He talked to CNN. Mr. President, welcome to the program. And when he went to Africa, he spoke to 200 students. Je suis d'une génération de Français pour qui les crimes de la colonisation européenne sont incontestables et font partie de notre histoire. So it's not that he doesn't speak; it's just that he talks to others. The media here have no choice but to use bits of these encounters. Emmanuel Macron promet une relation nouvelle entre l'Europe et l'Afrique. L'utilisation des mots, évidemment, il est Macron's choice of words is never a coincidence. He often uses English terms. Celui qui nous permettra de make our planet great again. Create a task force anti Daesh. Pardon de cet anglicisme, mais les fake news. And it's very disrupting for us as French journalists and also for French people who feel disconnected. We are not the target of his messages. He is targeting business executives and decision makers worldwide. Travail dans le monde entier. Within three months of taking office, having won 66% of the vote, Macron saw a sharp slide in his poll numbers. His proposed labor reforms and tax cuts were making the wrong kinds of headlines. So Macron did what most politicians who are having trouble with journalists do. He hired one. Bruno Roger Petit, a business journalist, was his new communications director. L'une des premières grandes interviews qu'Emmanuel Macron accorde, c'est au magazine Challenge. Et c'est Bruno Roger Petit qui en est l'un des, des auteurs avec deux autres confrères. Roger Petit made room in Macron's schedule for magazines like the glossy Paris Match and the conservative Les Points. On the TV side, he paired his boss with Cyril Hanouna, a celebrity host who is more of an actor-comedian than a journalist. Macron favors media outlets that have a direct impact on the public, like Paris Match, which likes covering the presidential couple, or Cyril Hanouna, who is extremely popular with young people. Oui, bonsoir, président. Oui. Comment ça va, président? Ça va très bien. Pour les journalistes politiques. Of course, when Macron calls Cyril Hanouna live on TV. The political journalists are choking because they keep trying to reach the president and, in fact, are still waiting for a call back. It was almost five months before Macron relented and granted his first French TV interview. 
He didn't go to France State Broadcaster. He chose the largest privately owned channel TF1 instead. Est-ce que votre lien avec les Français ne s'est pas distendu depuis 5 mois et est-ce que ça n'explique pas entre autres votre décision de nous parler ce soir? When he finally did speak to State TV, Macron and the journalist Laurent Delahousse strolled around the Elysée Palace. It struck French journalists and audiences as a very American style of light-touch interviewing. Macron's youth has been a major asset in his political rise. He realized he couldn't present himself in the same way as former presidents. He needed to do something in keeping with his new world ideal. So he invited someone from his generation. They met as two young people, one a president, the other a journalist, with the most important audience in France. He decided to act like they do on American shows. I think Macron tricked Laurent Delahousse. How do you conduct a meaningful interview when you're strolling through the Elysee's corridors in dim light? You can't ask sharp questions in that kind of setting. On est dans votre bureau ou dans l'un de vos bureaux. Il y a quelques minutes, on m'a dit que c'était pas toujours le même bureau. Vous avez plusieurs bureaux, à l'Elysée. Donc, en acceptant cette ah, forme, by accepting this format, Delahousse des was des forced to go in with a series of softball les... questions. It looked like a concession from the press and it added fuel to the fire regarding the media's relationship with the president. Emmanuel Macron no longer gives French journalists the silent treatment, but the relationship is far from cordial. Les journalistes ont un problème. Ils s'intéressent trop peu et pas assez au pays. He has criticized previous presidents for being too close to journalists, accused the French media of narcissism, and has reportedly called the state broadcaster la honte de la République, the shame of the Republic. Macron has made it clear they are in for an overhaul. Among the buzzwords being circulated, there is restructuring and externalization. That means putting more TV production work into the hands of independent media companies. But there's also talk of big budget cuts. Media analysts here say the proposed reforms could result in less public service journalism and eventually fewer people holding power to account. For instance, the government plans to change the amount of airtime parliamentary parties get on TV. This could mean about 70% of airtime goes to Macron's own party on Marche, and only 30% of airtime goes to all the others. This could be a game changer. But for now, we know very little about these reforms, so we shouldn't prejudge the president. The whole history of French presidents and broadcasters, whether with Mitterrand, Chirac, Sarkozy, a bit less with Hollande, has been about keeping public TV and radio under their control. I think he's really old world in that he thinks he should have complete control over public broadcasting. When it comes to the media, Macron's intentions are not all that different to his predecessors, even if the tactics and the rhetoric are. If the French president gets away with it, his so-called revolution will be televised his way. <laughs>